Hi, this is Laura Solomon at Oakland, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create new story blocks and how to arrange your story blocks. So let's start by going and creating a new story or article. I'm going to move my recording window up just a little bit, and we're going to go to content, add content, and yours may say story or it may say article but either way it's the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and click story. I'm going to move my recording window over just a little bit again. Okay, so I'm going to do this just like I would any other piece of content. I'm going to give it a title. And I'm also going to give it uh, some text. Hang on just a second while I grab some. There we go, I'm giving it a little bit of description there. Now, chances are your particular story might have a lot more information than this. So what I'm going to do is to pretend that we have more information as I'm just going to, I don't know why my screen keeps jumping, but I'm going to just go ahead and paste in several iterations of this same sentence so that we can pretend that we have more content than we do. I'm sorry, my screen keeps jumping. I'm not sure why it's doing it. I'm using a new version of Screencast-O-Matic, and I suspect that may be contributing. Um, okay, so now we have a whole bunch of content. But if we were to go look at the home page again, you might have noticed something about story blocks. Story blocks have just a little tiny bit of text, a sentence maybe two tops. And that is how they are specifically designed. You should never be having any longer text than that on a home page. As all of you learn during training, any more text than that, uh, regardless of your site's format, and people will essentially tune it out. They will not read it. In fact, it actively turns people off. They do not like to read large chunks of text, which is why we have this format. So the question, of course, comes up, well, if there's just a sentence or two here, we just added a whole bunch of text to this story or article, that's not all going to show up. So what is, how does this work? Well, this is why there are actually two fields um, that you have to be concerned with. So there's this field, the body field, which you're acquainted with, but then there's also a field that's kind of hidden called the summary. You'll notice there is a hyperlink right here next to the body description um, or, or label. It says edit summary. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And now I have a whole nother little body field. And this is where you're going to put just the text that shows up on the home page. And it can be completely different than whatever is in the body field. The body field will show up when someone clicks the title or the learn more of your story or article in the story block. The summary only shows up on the home page. So it's just that one, maybe two tops sentences um, that you're going to have in the story block. So I could put something entirely different in this field compared the body field. And if I do that, that means that the summary will show on only on the home page, and then the body field will show up when someone clicks through to see the full item. Now, whatever is in the summary field will replace the body field only on the home page. I've said that several times now, but it's really important to remember because um, anything in here will automatically override the body field on the home page. So if you decided that, for instance, you wanted just, let's say, this amount I've just highlighted as your body, you still need to put it in the summary. Otherwise, your summary is going to be blank because the story blocks use the summary field specifically. So they could be the same. And that's okay, but you need to make sure that if this is going to be in a story block, that you have a short summary in there. And I'm going to put, and I know this will keep bouncing, put this more text in there so we'll be able to tell the difference when we publish it. Notice that for the body, you have all the same options that you do for any other content type. All those options are available to you. Those don't go away just because something's in a story block. It's just that some of those things, um, like pictures and 
uh, maybe videos and tables, some of those bigger items will only appear in the body. Let's scroll down now, and we have all the same things that we've had, but now we have a new field that we have not had before, and that is called the front page image. The front page image is going to be that image that shows up at the top of the story block, like here you see Adventure Club and Sensory Storytime. Um, these all have a specific height and width. Always, regardless, uh, now it's not the same for every website kit, so be sure to check your measurements. Mostly they are 330 by 186 pixels, but not everyone's are exactly that size. And if yours is not that size and you try to upload something different, um, you will end up with an error message. It won't allow you to do it. So I actually have a file that I'm going to grab here that's just the right size, and I'm going to upload it. And notice once I do that, you get that alternate text field. Remember that whenever you upload an image of any kind anywhere into your website kit, that you need this text so that people who are blind and visually impaired have a way to interact with that image and understand why it's there. So in this case, I'm simply going to say night stories because it's got text on the image. It's a pretty easy alternate text tag. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave everything else. I don't need to make any other changes. I could preview if I wanted, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and click submit. And there it is. That's what it will look like in its sort of its full. You can see there's all the text. Um, some of you may show the front page image in the full item, some of you may not, depending on your website kit. So if you don't see it, don't worry. It's, but the, it's really the items um, and the text that are in the body field that we're concerned with here. So let's go back to our home page and scroll down. And wait a minute. Now, where is our new item for our story blocks? There's a, another part of the process here. So you may have a separate link across the top, or it may be under structure, but in all cases, it should pretty much say add and order front page. So this is a queue of all the items that are currently in the story blocks. And that's, it's called the front page queue. So right now we can see the names of all of the items there, and we need to add the new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and start typing night, Stories. There it goes, and it will eventually figure out what you're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And when I do that, it's going to knock one of these out, um, either from the top or the bottom, automatically. So you may want to remove the one you don't want anymore before you do this, because otherwise you may remove the one you don't want to get rid of um, when it adds another one, because only four can be in the queue. So I'm going to go ahead and remove Century Storytime first, actually. And now I'm going to go ahead and click Add Content. There we go. Oops, let's remove Century Storytime. There we go. Okay. So we've got, probably did something weird because I was trying to do two things at once. Um, so, okay, now we've got four items in our queue, which is all that it can hold. And it's also in this order. Now, it does not have to be in this order. Now, right now, Night Stories is up at the top and the Wild Craft Adventure Club is at the bottom. And that's actually probably the way I'm going to want it, but if I didn't, I could move these around simply by dragging and dropping these like you do many other items in your website kit, just holding down the mouse and moving things around. So I could, I'm going to just put it there just for the sake of example. And then I'm going to go ahead and I have to click save. Remember, every time you start making changes in this queue, you're going to get this message. Changes made in this table will not be saved until the form is submitted. So you can mess around with this and remove items and add items, um, but until you click save, nothing is going to happen. So let's go ahead and click save. It's been updated. So now let's go back to our home page. And there we go. Now there's night stories. It's showing up in our second story block. And you notice here's that one sentence or two sentences that I had a little bit of text but if we click through to more now we go back here and you can see the entire thing um, you also have a tab here called node queue this is the same thing but it's a longer way to get there if you wanted to take this 
you could go look at the queue by clicking the word front, or you could from here actually remove it directly from the queue this way if you wanted to do that later. Now, another thing that you can do with items um, in your website kit is not just put stories or articles into story blocks, but you can also do the same thing with events. Remember, events can go on your home page too. So if we go to events and programs, we're going to create that as a new piece of content. Let that load in there. There we go. Okay, so now we have the same thing. And notice there's that summary field. Okay, it's still there, so you can use it for your story block text. You have all the options for events that you've had, file attachments and dates, and you may have different kinds of categories to assign it to. And then you also have front page image. If you do not create a front page image, um, well, you're going to end up with no image on the home page if you decide to put this into a queue. Um, but notice that it is not required for an event because, of course, not all events are actually put into story blocks and put on the home page. So you can do this with events as well. And if you did that, you would also, again, go back to structure, add an order front page, and then you would get rid of one of these um, and then add in the new event. If you have any questions, don't forget that you can always contact me here at Oakland, laura at oakland.ohio.gov. Thank you.